Hi Truth Seekers, today I want to tell you a little bit about my path. But before I do that, if you are new to my channel, please remember to hit that subscribe button so you can stay updated with my newest content. Also, remember to click the notification bell right next to it. And if you like this presentation, please give it a thumbs up and comment below. I respond to you as soon as possible. Today you're going to learn a little bit about my path in somewhat of a poem format. Let me know in the comments if anything I said in it resonated with you. Okay, without any further delay, let's jump in. The path I now walk is somewhat a lonely one. While a myriad of intrigue colors the steps, each step I take into this new paradigm puts me farther away from those with whom I once shared amicable space. The deeper I dive, the deeper it gets. Layers upon layers of mysteries unfold, my mind can get no rest. Still, precious treasures are found deep beneath many surfaces, but not all can journey to far and unknown places. Nonetheless, I would rather those I love, and the same whose love I know, to embark on this path with me. Not because I said so, but because I deem it necessary. Here's why. Light is found on this path. This kind of light dispels all fears. And these parties are no longer a burden that destroys, but connections that illuminate. Souls can be elevated by this light because it penetrates theological dogmas and produces higher states of consciousness. What once occupied the mind only in the literal sense will now provide esoteric teachings worth your time and investment. Where there was once a great disconnect between God and man will now prove that man is one with his creator. By this light, many will be awakened. No, it's not from a physical sleep, but a spiritual slumber. Here's another reason. Truth is found on this path. This kind of truth is not popular, but it is liberating. I speak not of liberation as one locked in shackles and chains. Neither do I refer to truth as the one salvation claims to offer. It's not the truth that gets you off the hook for false deeds either, because by no stretch of the imagination can one escape himself. This truth cuts asunder all deceptive schemes and devices implemented to wreak havoc on our senses. This truth breaks the back of the iron camel that the oppressors use to hijack our consciousness. It is this truth that helps one come to the realization that all is one and one is all. Here's the third reason to consider this path. Peace is found on this path. I speak not of a prophetic peace that war must precede. The peace that is shared between friends cannot compare. Nor can the peace extended to one's enemies be measured against it. I speak of a peace that lies dormant within oneself, only activated upon knowing that he is not separate from the Creator and by no means can be. Even the Christ alluded to this when he prayed, Father, I pray that they may be one, as I in you and you in me, so they might be one in us. And that is found in John 17 verse 21. This peace needs no security or assurance because it is assurance in itself. Only those led astray by the cunning schemes of the parasites know not this. Here's even another reason to consider this path. Love is found on this path. Need I say the Christian love is not its equal? This love stands on the premise of true understanding. Because how can one love what he does not know? And how can one say he knows when he does not understand? This love is not merely a feeling, but light and truth combined. The three are inseparable because none is complete without the other. It is the kind of love that makes no false judgments, but seeks at best to align itself with natural laws and principles. This love stands only on the side of light and rests only in the bosom of truth. Hmm... Mystery paves this path. As said earlier, there are many layers to unfold, only to find there is another not yet touched. The things you once deemed impossible soon leaves you in awe and confusion. 
But let not wishful thinking be misconstrued as the mystery being spoken of here. Because we all have limitless imaginations, but without an anchor, no purpose-driven direction can be established. This anchor is devoid of preconceived notions. It bears no fruit watered in prejudice either. Instead, it leaves the door of possibilities open and only close that door when irrevocable evidence is presented that proves otherwise. Nevertheless, it is not to say that all that remains a mystery is without doubt probable. It is to say all that is a mystery can over a lifetime of experience be demystified. Take the invention of the light bulb for example. Only after several failed attempts was the mystery of the light bulb made possible. But to those who lean towards doubts, they would quickly roar, it's impossible. At last, knowledge is this path. This knowledge is not primarily found in religious texts or scholarly articles. Neither is it garnered from those that came before, speaking to the other things mentioned earlier. Though all these are attributes of the breadcrumbs we pick up along the way, inner knowledge is a point where all knowing starts and ends. Just as reading a book is useless if not correctly interpreted and applied, likewise this knowledge is futile if not clothed in wisdom, understanding, truth, light, and love. This path, knowledge, paves the way for light, truth, peace, love, and mystery. As without knowledge, none of these can be appreciated and applied. In other words, nothing that preceded this can have true meaning without a reference. It is this reference we need to stand on when challenges come. Even so, it should not be mistaken for gold, because it is but silver. Now, many say they know God. This is a bold claim. But in truth, how can we know the unknowable? Isn't it safer and even more reasonable to say, I have a knowledge of God, or to say I am acquainted with the creative spirit that is within me and around me? But even then, this would not prove much because that which we claim to know came by means of conditioning. You see, we pride ourselves with knowledge yet lose sight of its purpose. We boast of knowing while still blindly yielding to things we were told. So let me put things in perspective. Knowledge is my path to true freedom. I chose this path because I realized it is the safest, not because it was the easiest. In truth, it is easier to follow a community regardless of the isms and schisms. It is easier to give my power and energy over to those that preach the gospel of peace but live the lives of thieves. It is easier to surrender to a force outside of me because it makes me lifelong promises. It is easier to turn a blind eye to biblical contradictions and blatant inconsistencies. Yes, it is easier to accept the rulership of a tyrant than to challenge him. But what makes us think easier is better. What makes us believe everything we were taught is true. Most importantly, what makes us accept one story about our origin and creator without first examining the others? Hence came my quest for knowledge, even more, my quest for truth. My quest for truth came long before I accepted the Advent message. Sadly, having a desire for truth without a desire for knowledge is counterproductive, a reality I came to terms with. It was only when I decided to seek knowledge that truth appeared. Again, this knowledge is futile without understanding wisdom, light, truth, and love. You see, they are all interwoven. My hunger for truth led to my hunger for knowledge, and my hunger for knowledge led to the desire for true freedom, which comes only by knowing oneself. Therefore, although I really wish all I love to join me on this path, this path has no return. If one decides to take this journey, he must detach himself from all he thinks he knows. For this reason, I leave the truth seeker with this. Truth is scattered throughout the universe for all to see, but only those whose eyes are not overshadowed with preconceived ideas will embrace this truth.
To learn more, go to www.trumarco.com. And as always, let knowledge be your path to true freedom. Until next time, peace.